Well, good evening, and thank you for tuning in to another evening with Fathers Who Care. And you know me, as always. It is always a pleasure to be in the land of the living one more day. And listen, I am not going to complain because all is well in my heart. But listen, I just want to thank uh, Can TV. I want to thank the Youth Council, the young folks who are striving so feverishly and every day there, putting in the work every time we come down to produce these shows for me. And I love them young people for it. My main man, Omari, and all of those who contribute to making this show possible. I want to say to you one more time thank you so much for all that you give to so many people and sometimes it don't mean much just to say thank you but I'm saying thank you thank you thank you thank you but with that being said you know how this show works this is Father Sukan what we try to do each week we try to bring to you people you should know People who are making a difference, people who have made a difference, people who have the love, the compassion, and sincerity, the integrity, and just the downright love for the people to do the right work. And so today is like no other day. We're going to bring that to you just the same. Our special guest is an even when I'm going to present to some, I'm going to present to some and introduce to others is none other than my dear friend. And I'm going to introduce her in a few minutes. And I love this sister because this sister has a heart of gold. She loves the people. She's been fighting for social justice, uh, for community empowerment, all that good stuff. And I mean, she's a true agent and a true servant for social change, and I rock with her because she has the right heart, and I always would see her in the community or downstate or all the time just doing good work. But anyway, you watching Fathers Who Can, as you know, uh, this show is the show that we're bringing to you individuals we know have been vetted, who have been proven, who love the work that they're doing, and we need to take a close look at. So let's have some time tonight and talk about what does it mean to be civically engaged? Yes. If that's okay. It is. I, I've been talking to these young folks about being civically engaged, and I continuously try to bring to them individuals they should know or that they should model after. Mm -hmm. and, 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 of course, you're next. <laughs> you're so next. You. Because not only are you, from what I heard, and you can correct me on some of this, I've heard that you are running for judge. I am. And I heard you was running for judge of the seventh sub circuit. It's the seventh judicial sub circuit, correct? Okay, so I'd like to talk about that in a little while. Sure. But you also was the uh, state rep of the tenth district. That's correct. So you're a former state rep. Yes. You, first, you're not a lawyer. Correct. I've been mm -hmm. an attorney for 27 years. You've been an attorney for 27 years. Then you was a state rep, correct. and now you're running for judge here. Correct. Okay, so let's do this here. Let's get this show started, if you all don't mind. Of course, you're watching Fathers Who Care here. And this show is a live, interactive show where you have a question. Call in and let's talk about it. You know, we're going to talk about good things tonight. We're going to talk about voter registration. We're going to talk about the importance of the census. We're going to talk about being civically engaged. We're going to talk about be about it, don't talk about it. Get out there and make your vote count. Because if you're Amen. not being counted, then you don't count. That's right. Got that passion? Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have it. So what I want to do, though, uh, if I, it's okay, if it's okay, can I call you Pamela? You can call me Pam. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Pam, you know, because I normally be calling you rap. No, that's uh, something fine. That Pam is fine. So, Pam, I, I, I want you to do me a favor. I, I kind of know a little bit about you. Sure. Uh, but the audience don't know. Okay. But tell the audience, who is Pam? Um. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you, Reverend Jones, my for heart, having me. This is heart. one of my favorite people. Absolutely. And I, I, I love honored, you, too. I'm really honored to be here. It's been a little while since I've been here with you. So. You've been busy. Yeah. I've, I've been really busy. <laughs> You've been busy. So, um, but I am running for circuit court yeah. judge. As you said, um, I used to be the state representative mm -hmm. of the 10th district. But um, I originally was born in Cabrini, worked hard, got my undergraduate degree and then my law degree, mm -hmm. um, started in corporate law, and then I'm a mother of two wonderful daughters. Mm -hmm. I tease them all the time because I walked away from corporate law, even though I had the ability to make a lot of money. I wanted to be with my girls. They are my heart and my soul. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that's who I am. I'm a mom. I'm a working mom. I'm an attorney. I'm a community um, advocate. I, you know, I love my community. I believe and working in the community. Everyone should be engaged. Um, I think, um, you know, if all of the problems that we see, I was walking through the community today, and we have some real challenges on the west side of Chicago. We need everyone to become engaged and address some of the issues that we have. So um, that's who I am. I'm a person that cares about their community. So I'm going I'm to kind of speed up this conversation. I love that. So let me just cut through the chase. Why do you want to be a judge? Um, because we need people. The Seventh Judicial Subcircuit was created 
specifically so the west side of Chicago could have someone who have similarly lived experience in the judiciary so mm -hmm. that when people such as us come into the judicial system, okay. um, we have an understanding of what it is to live on the west side of Chicago. So you're talking about to fairness. Be someone. Absolutely. Integrity. To be fair. Not compassion. only fairness, compassion, yeah. and someone with integrity because um, it is important to understand someone's lived experience and mm -hmm. then have the integrity to do right by them, okay, to have the compassion okay. to do right by them. It's still following the law, but understanding, you know, and listening to someone, that's, it's just important. So what are the duties of a, 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 a judge of the sub-circuit? Sub Go ahead. Well, yeah, uh, what's the duties? The duty of a, a sub-circuit judge is just like any other county. Okay. It's a county-wide seat. The, judici the Cook Judicial Circuit was uh, broken up into 15 sub-circuits okay. because it was so big, so they wanted to make it easier for minorities to get to the bench, and Republicans, actually. To get fair to, representation. To, to, fair rep to have a, a, a representation from your community. Got it. Got in it. the judiciary system. So that's the so key. That's the key, but okay. it is. But you're just like any other Cook County judge. Okay. You 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 make a determination. You make rulings based on the case and the evidence that's presented in front of you, applying the law. And you do it fairly. Well, you know, and you've always been a person of fairness. Mm -hmm. You've been a person of integrity. Absolutely. You've been a person of compassion. So with those be translated to the bench. Absolutely. I've tried to live my life. I don't I try not to get parking tickets. I've tried to live my life with the utmost integrity because I've worked as an administrative law judge for so long and I've always felt that as a, as someone sitting in judgment of someone you mm -hmm. can't sit in judgment of someone on, so, of someone else if you're not going to follow the rules and you're not going to follow the law. And so I've tried to live my life with the highest integrity, but I've also had you know, of compassion. I've always, I was raised with compassion. My family, um, we are very emotional kids, but um, all of my brothers and sisters are. But I was also, uh, I'm a recent breast cancer survivor. Really? Yes. Um, back in 2016, so, I was so diagnosed. So favor's on you all day. It is. And, you know, I've been blessed. Yes, you and, are. And that just emphasized to me um, that life is important. It should be cherished. It should be respectful. You have to treat people with kindness. You have to listen. It's just and you've you know, taken some extraordinary trips too. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, that's my one vice. That is my one vice. I shop at Marshalls. Yeah. You know, I shop. I, you know, I get all my clothes and my furniture stuff. You know, yeah. household goods at Marshalls yeah. because I love to travel. Yeah. So that is my one vice, yeah. and I will continue. I was getting. I wanted to travel after the election is over, yeah. but with this coronavirus going on, I just said I'm going to have to stay around the house and get a mani pedi and yeah. go get a facial and a massage. Okay. And that kind of thing. And just but hold I do on. Love to just travel. hold on. Those, they, yes. they, those places will be there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but let's come back and ask okay. this question because I, you know, I think it's really important that people understand what folks had to sacrifice for the right to vote. Absolutely. And, and I think people shouldn't take that lightly. Absolutely. And so, so, so I'm going to ask, I'm, I'm ask this question of you: Why, why should folks register the vote and those who are registered to vote to vote? You just said it because people sacrifice okay. for us to have the right to vote, and it is our right. You should never give up your right, something that belongs to you and something that's important for your voice to mm -hmm. be heard, for you to have someone who represents you in office so that if something is not going the way it should be going, then you have um, the right to call that person and demand that they represent the community or represent the population or the people. Um, because you have voted. It's very difficult mm -hmm. to sit and um, make demands when you not have not exercised your right. And right. it's just, there's so much that could be lost. There's just so much that's at stake that, as I said, I was walking through the community now. We need resources. We need services. We need our representatives to listen to us and bring, you know, jobs back to the community. Okay. So, and, okay. you know, we have to have the right people in office to do that. So you kind of gave me a, a inroad to another question. And that question is, you know, we've been working with so many different folks out here today. And there's a big campaign, big push out right now of the 2020 census. Mm -hmm. and, and we're trying to get people to understand to not be afraid yeah. that the, the, the boogeyman ain't coming to get you. Ain't well, nobody they already coming. know you there. Yeah, they already know you're there, right. They, so, the boogeyman ain't yeah, coming no, to take your coming. VCR no, and all no, that old no, stuff. They don't no, even use no, those no, no more. No. You know, what is the census and why should people be involved in the census? 
because the census makes a determination of how much um, resources that you receive in terms of federal grants and federal mm -hmm. money from the government. Right. So every individual is a lot is accounted for attributed so much amount of money. Right. And if you're not counted or if someone in your household is not counted, that's our state, that's our community leave, um, losing out on resources right. that we desperately need. How many schools are closing? How right. many, you know, how many of our homes are vacant? How many, you know, we just, our community, on particularly on the west side of Chicago, our mm -hmm. community is, is, um, it's, in, it's going through really hard times. It, all, it has been for a, a while. So it's important that any resources we have access to, we take advantage of. And that is what the, the census, it makes a determination, of how, a determination of how much resources will be allotted to your community. So, so you heard it here first. The, the census has a lot to do with the appropriation of resources yes. to the communities yes. and the appropriation of representation Absolutely. for your community. Good point. Absolutely. Yeah. We have the cho we have the I mean if we're not properly counted, we can lose a con congressional seat. You know, everyone knows Congressman Davis. He's a wonderful congressman and I don't think He's a would, statesman. Uh, you are he's a statesman. <laughs> An elder statesman. Elder. And I think people would be very highly upset if we were to lose one of our congressmen and, and the seat and the seat. And that's <laughs> Something that could very yeah. likely happen. Yeah. We don't um, fill out the census, and it's very simple. Only one census has to be filled out per household. You can count the total number of individuals mm -hmm. that live in that household and just send that one census in, and it's done. And some folks are doing it now online. Yes, they can do it on phone calls. Yes, yes. So, you so can do it online. Yeah. As, exactly. So, it's so and it's only every ten years. Yes. All right. Yes. So it ain't like you know once you do it, and don't be afraid, folks. Be having their IDs when they come out. The numerators they have their IDs and all that right. stuff. So you will know who they are. It wouldn't be some folks coming to try to scam you because you don't have to give up that personal kind of information. Absolutely, you do not. You, you know, just, the, the yeah. bottom line, you're just telling them the number of people that That's live all. in your household. I got That's five it. children in the house. Right. <laughs> and, and and Bubba. And, yes. Bubba over there too. And Uncle Bob living <laughs> and, in the basement. And Uncle Bob downstairs. <laughs> Shh, but don't yes. wake him up. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> he's not nice. Exactly. in the morning. But let's come back to you. Okay. So tell us about your campaign. You, you, you're running a campaign right I now. Am. Let's cut through I the am. chase. Well, you're running a campaign. I am. It's, a, it's been, so a, talk about it's it. been a grassroot campaign. Go ahead. Um, it's, you know, I, fortunately I ran for office before and I had people who taught me how mm -hmm. to run an election very, right. very effectively and with very little money. And so I've just been working very, very hard to get my name out into the back out. But the, the people community. are talking about you, though. Good. I'm glad because you. I, you know I've been going door to door, knocking and um, sending out mailers, telling people who I am, telling them. You, it, uh, as a judge, you cannot campaign on the issues. You can only campaign on your experiences. And I should say, I would like to say that I've been found qualified. Mm -hmm. by all of the bar associations, Absolutely. as well as um, endorsed by the majority of the West Side elected officials. And so... Um, and and you, your, your heart is right. It is. I mean, your, your heart is. is right. You care for the people. I'm I just do. being frank. I do. Your heart is right. You care for the people. I do. You're honest. You, you, you're a woman of integrity. You have compassion. Yes. I mean, you're serious about what you believe in. I do. And, and you're not trying to get into a position for a position. You really yeah. have a heart for serving the folks. Absolutely. Um, y yes. Um, you know, I'm not a spring chicken. <laughs> I may look like one, but I'm not. And you do look Thank like one. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. But um, I've had a long... Um, successful career. I've worked very, very hard all of my life. I could easily go into the sunset and, and, and you know, and be comfortable with my family. I wish my girls would give me a grandchild. They're going to kill me that I said that, but, but that's but, what but I want. But you always put it on Facebook. I know, because that's what I want. I want <laughs> I, a grandchild on Facebook and a before. dog. If <laughs> yeah. I had a grandchild and a dog, I'm telling you, I may not have run. <laughs> be but, careful. But, they may get that for you. <laughs> no, trust me. No, not anytime soon. <laughs> no. But no, not anytime soon. But, but, but tell it, us again. Come on back about your kid. It was my yeah. passion that we have somebody on the bench that's representing our community, mm -hmm. that comes from our community, that knows our community, that has the compassion for the people in our community, that has walked our district, that's talked to the people, mm -hmm. that grocery shops in our community. If you're going to be sitting in judgment of me, you should understand who I am. Well, I don't think there's no one is sitting in judgment of because they, they can't judge you. Well, you, well, but when you're a circuit court judge, that's what you do. Oh, really? You make rulings based on the evidence, and some of it is based on credibility. Okay, Whether or not I believe in what you're saying, 
saying. And but how I think, do I take that evidence and how do I weigh the evidence? Well, but I, but I think you would weigh it with fairness. That's my. I, well, I think absolutely. you would actually use the scale not, of justice absolutely. fairly. I, I just believe it. Me, absolutely. Yeah, I know but you I would. think I think that it's still lived experiences still mm -hmm. come into play. You know, it, I mean, you can only rule on the evidence that's been presented in front right. of you. I don't mean to imply. So that why should why should why should people why should people come out and support you? And and if they want to know more about you, how can they get in touch with you? Well, I had a, I had I had something I put yes, up. Yes, my web mind. my website. They could go to my website is Reeves Harris for Judge dot com, and that's Reeves R E A V E S mm -hmm. Harris for Judge dot com, and they everything about me is on my website. They can email me. I'll return it um, the emails as quickly as I can. See, you got on here say. Uh, Vote for fairness, integrity, and compassion. Because that's there who you I have am. It. Right. And you, you are. That's, I mean, that's, it speaks I've for itself. I've tried to be. You know, I, I, I work very hard at it. I was just telling my my daughters today that you don't have to respond to everyone. You you can't let anyone um, take you out of who you are. Take it's, you out of character. So, yeah, take you out of character. Yeah. It's just so much easier yeah. to be kind. Yeah. It's just so much easier to be kind. Yeah. And, and respectful, Hold your peace. and, and re be respectful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, w I was raised. You know, my my mom raised us correctly. Mm -hmm. You respect people, and you listen, and you and I think that that's what the bench needs. And with my um, professional experience and my lived experiences, I think I will. I know I will make a great representation on the judiciary bench for the west side of Chicago. So we've talked And the western suburbs. I shouldn't leave them out. Absolutely, because it's the Seventh Circuit. Correct. So we talked about. This, uh, we talked about voter registration. Correct. We okay. We got a caller. Let's get this call okay, sure. and then and Thank then you. let's let's go back to the conversation. Okay. Then when we come back, I want you to talk to us about your vision. Okay, I will. Uh, as a judge. Okay. Caller, thank you so much for calling. Of course, we have none other than our favorite guest, uh, Pamela Reeves Harris, <laughs> candidate for us, uh, a judge of the Seventh Sub Circuit. Go ahead. Your comment or question, please. Uh, my question is, what inspired you to become a judge? I just would like to What's hear. What's inspiring you what to want to be a, a judge? You what would inspire <laughs> Thank oh you for the question. God. Yes, thank you for the question. I think we kind of touched upon that. Yeah. I, it's important to me that if, because, again, this seventh sub-circuit was created for representation predominantly on the west side of Chicago, and it's important to me that someone who's sitting in that seat represents the west side of yeah, Chicago, yeah. has integri integrity that we need that's re representing us, that yeah, has the compassion yeah. um, for well, Let's cut through the shakes, somebody like us. Somebody, I mean, it, <laughs> What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it, is you, but you have to be PC as well. Well, they I mean, I'm just saying. have the heart for the people that's right, that's of right. our that's community, good, that's and good. I have the heart. I've always had the heart for yeah. our community. That's a good one. That's a good question. Yes. Yeah, that was a good response. Mm -hmm. Having a heart, and you do have the heart. Yes, I the, have. The phone lines are open, 312-738-1060. We're talking about fairness. We're talking about integrity. We're talking about Pam running for judge of the Southern Sur Seven Sub Circuit. And we're talking about voters' registration. And we're talking about being civically engaged. And, and we're census. talking about the census. Yes. Don't forget the census Please because there's opportunities it. at the census right now. Right now they got uh, uh, jobs for you at the census. And if you want additional information about that, log on to the 2020census.gov slash jobs. Or give us a call at Father Sukare at 773-287-5821. And we'll get you in touch with those folks uh, who have jobs out here. Uh, extra income, flexible hours, weekly pay paid training. I mean, come on, who don't want a little extra change before yeah. the summer hit? <laughs> exactly. Yes. Go I on do. That vacation. I Go do. To Jamaica. That's right. <laughs> you talk about my trips. That's right. <laughs> and, and I ain't mad at you. But listen, we again, we're talking to all jokes aside. We, we're having fun, of yes. course. But it's important to vote. You talked about it that. Is. It's it important is. to be actively involved in the census. Believe me. It's resources allocation. And then we talked about being civically minded. I mean, it's your right. It's your responsibility to go into your community and make a difference. If you're not making a difference in a the community, then what are you talking about? Yes. And if you're not voting, then what's your problem, all right? Mm -hmm. If you're sitting around talking about all this stuff going on in the world and you're not voting, you're not even registered to vote, shame on you. Yes. And I don't mean no disrespect to nobody, but shame on you. <laughs> right? I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's 
it's you know it's a huge responsibility, and we all bear that responsibility to make sure that yeah. people who are sitting in office, we're tax getting taxpayer dollars right. to get paid because you, when you purchase something, you're paying taxes, so you're paying their salary Absolutely. anyway. You might as well have a voice in who you're. No, pay, that's, that's the key. That's the key. That's the key. Yes. What you just said, the yes. voice. You might as well have a voice yeah. in the matter. Yeah. And if you don't get out there and vote, you have given up your voice. Your your voice. Right. And I will never get. I you know I'm a fighter. Yeah. I believe in fighting for my community as well as for who's representing me. And you know I echo that. Uh, and, and you know there's a statement. You know we've been talking, and, and there's a statement that keep coming to my mind that if you're not being counted, then you don't count. Exactly. So if you're not being counted and you don't count, then therefore you don't even exist. And, and, <laughs> you and, know? and again, one of the things you really need to emphasize as you have been doing, there's nothing to be fearful of. You know, there's nothing to be fearful of. It's just counting the number of households because they just so as you, you made, that was a good phrase, resources allocation. If you live in our community on the west side of Chicago, you know how much resources we need. Mm -hmm. We need schools. We need to build on these vacant lots. We need grocery stores. Mm -hmm. We need resources. And unless you're counted, you are not going you're not contributing to to making our community a better place. Right. And that's everybody's responsibility. Absolutely. And we want we want to of course, we want the best that we can get. We want a better quality of life in our neighborhoods. We want our children to be able to walk yes. around safe. We want them to have options. And we want to be able to look at some folks and say, they came from my neighborhood and they represent us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's we, an excellent point. Absolutely. We want to see our own in our community doing good so our young folks can aspire to be better. And, and, and that's one of the reasons, yeah. you know, if I, I mean, Go ahead. with God's grace, I will be successful. But I'm not going anywhere. I will be a West Sider for the rest of my life. And you are a West Sider. And I am a West Sider, yeah. and I will be for the rest of my life. Because it's important. Yeah. It's important that people who do succeed stay in the community. Because so that our kids can see that they Absolutely. too can make Young it. Young people can't be what Absolutely. they can't see. Absolutely. And if they can see it, they can be it. Yes. So yes. let's get back to the that question mm -hmm. that I was going to pose. Mm -hmm. What is your vision? My vision is to... Um, to bring Representative um, Anthony Young's dream to fruition. I believe that when he was the state representative that helped pass the um, legislation for the Seventh Judicial Subcircuit, and when he did that, it was his goal mm -hmm. to make sure that the west side of Chicago and minorities particularly African Americans, had mm -hmm. an opportunity to make it to the bench. Right. And with integrity, with com someone with integrity, compassion, and a heart for the people. And I think I am the person that he had in mind. And and we believe that. And we want to encourage you, those of you who are interested in in, in Pamela's campaign and in, 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 additional information about Pam, she said you can go to her website. What it is again? It's Reeves, R-E-A-V-E-S, Harris, for judge.com. Listen, if you're looking for something to do for your young people to have something to do, send them on over there to Fathers Who Care at 773-287-5821, 773-287-5821. Listen, we love young folks. We're always trying to empower young folks. We're always trying to be a beacon, have a, a, a some, some something positive for these young folks to be involved in. And we just love loving on each other here. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank you all for tuning in to our guest, Pam. Yes. Thank you thank so much. You. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Pay, keep the heart. Keep yes. the passion and keep doing God's work because God got favor on your life and he's he going to bless you. Amen. He's going to give you what you need when yes. you need. You ain't got to sweat the small stuff or the small people. <laughs> Never will. <laughs> so with that being said, God bless you all. Good night. Good, we'll God see you next you. week. Let's keep doing the right thing to empower each other. God bless you. God loves you. And so do I. And ain't nothing you can do about it but see me when you see me and see me next week. Same time, same station. Good night. Good night.